Well, thank you for joining our second webinar uh, in partnership with Singtel during our circuit breaker in Singapore. Uh, but I know that our friends in Malaysia across the border is jo are joining us as well since the border is locked down, but at least we can see each other online. Yeah. So I hope everybody is keeping safe and well. Um, my, my name is Vivian Ko and my co-pilot Saga over there and I will be taking you through this webinar by the name of Survive COVID-19 Crisis by Adapting Your Sales and Marketing Approach. So uh, before I get into the details, I would like to go through some housekeeping. Um, this session is going to be recorded for the purpose of sending it to those who can't make it like my friend in Japan. And please mute yourself uh, so that we can avoid feedback. But having said that, it's an opportunity for you to also network with other people here um, by introducing yourself on the chat, uh, chat feature here. And you can post your LinkedIn profile in the chat room. So towards the end, I also would like to invite you for Q&A um, and you can, and you can post your questions on the chat feature as indicated here. Okay, so a little bit about myself. Um, I'm the founder and managing director of VK Transformation, a sales and marketing con consulting firm focusing on digital transformation and data analytics. Um, I'm also a certified practicing management consultant and a and a certified ACTA trainer. Over the years, I have evolved my career in sales and marketing from inside sales, field sales, channel sales, renewal sales, and to digital sales and marketing, especially when I hang out and spend time in Google. Uh, four years ago, I started my own consulting platform or practice. Um, and my team and I have been helping e-commerce companies like Far East, Flora um, to improve return on ad spend and CPA using data science tools, as well as pharmaceutical companies like uh, Dexa Medical to brave the COVID-19 so that they will be able to acquire new, acquire new customers through different digital platforms. And then the other thing is B2C. Uh, econometric furniture company that we've helped to break into B2B company, uh, markets and, and also we're working with manufacturing companies like Swift Bridge Technologies in helping their field sales to adopt virtual selling and a construction company by the name of Elmage on their business model innovation. So there's been quite a lot of things happening over the past few years. Um, I'm also a professor adjunct professor in SMU, Singapore Management University, teaching design thinking, as well as business model innovation and arts and science of selling. So over to you, Saga. Let's hear it from you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sagar. I'm the business analyst at VK Transformation. Uh, I also lead the VKT, uh, VK Transformation Data Analytics Center of Excellence. And I work very closely with Vivian in development of go-to-market strategies, development of new solutions and enabling digital transformations for our clients. Uh, I have experience in product uh, management and develop, enabling digital transformation for my organization as well as my clients who were in space of uh, automotive, uh, logistics, telco, e-commerce. And I'm very excited to uh, talk about different approaches and strategies uh, that we'll be talking through this seminar uh, and hope to receive good feedback from everyone. Back to you, Vivian. Thanks, Saga. We want to be able to do our part to contribute during these tough times. Um, like Brian has mentioned earlier, one of our participants, hi Brian, um, to, um, to help businesses to accelerate their sales and marketing transformation during this COVID period by sharing our insights and experiences. So here's the agenda for our webinar today. Um, personally, I have also gone through SARS, but the impact of COVID is frighteningly real with 185 countries, as you can see here, affected to date. And within the span of two weeks, since the last webinar, um, the number of cases almost doubled. And in response to that, government had, around the world has instigated lockdowns 
at least 21 countries is under lockdown, including Singapore, which has been extended to 1st of June, right? So what does it mean for, um, for, for businesses? So many businesses are facing volatility as well as uncertainties during this time with some industry like travel, tourism, hospitality and events industry um, heavily impacted. As you can see here, 100, 810 billion loss is estimated for global business travel and 300 to 450 billion loss is estimated for global tourism. Hotel occupancy is down to uh, by about 70% for China and Singapore is experienced at least 50%. Um, and with this social distancing and lockdown, people are staying at home. So inter internet traffic is exploding like crazy and all of us here are addicted now to online shopping. So online transaction has increased by 74% um, across worldwide in March itself. It's crazy. And we, um, my team and I spend a lot of time in Zoom and we have been contributing to the 200 meet, uh, million daily meetings of users, which has accounted for 20x growth over the past few months. It's crazy, but we, my team and I have also been discussing whether if these change of behaviors will be here to stay or maybe they will be irreversible. IMF has also announced that the world economic outlook is, um, will fall to about negative 3% in 2020. So according to ADB, the virus will cost the global economy as high as 4.1 trillion which is 5% of the global GDP. So COVID-19 will be felt differently for other businesses, for different businesses, depending on the industry, whether, with, whether their products are essential or non-essential, and also their online maturity. So businesses, as you can see here on the lower quadrant, um, should look for ways to explore alternate revenue streams and also, if you are running your business offline, you should fast track and enable digital first business model so that you will, while you're managing your costs and also then be reaching out to your customers where they are living in the virtual world these days. And as you can see here at the top, it's quite interesting. There's quite a few industries that are doing well. I've just spoken to one of the companies. He said, Vivian, I have, um, I have 20X my business as compared to last year over this period of time is because of his value proposition which meets the customer's requirement. So if you are parked at this quadrant, um, congratulations. Um, we, I, would, I would advise you to capture the opportunity and, and also accelerate growth plans as, um, as many have done. Okay, so as you can see here, it's interesting to see to, to, um, to find out that we have a very diverse audience as compared to our other webinar. Uh, we have B2B and B2C and some of them are doing both B2B and B2C as well. Quite interesting, right? So um, I will stop here and would like to invite you for a poll question. Please rank your top three business issues. Thanks, Saga for posting the poll polling right now and um, and I'll give you two minutes, okay, to, uh, to partake. I'll stop here. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see what will be the top three business issues. Um, I'm sure all of them, uh, all of us will be sharing some common issues. Okay. <clears throat> For those who have just joined, please feel free to partake on our polling right now that's happening on the screen. It'll be fun and also it'll be interesting to see whether we share some of the business issues. 
So I wanted to make it more interactive um, during our webinar by having to introduce polling. Okay, so I'll stop. I'll ring the bell at the second minute. And um, okay, good. Or when we stop at 28. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it looks like there's a bit of stagnant. Okay, yeah. slowing down right now, slowing down. So it looks like. Um, I think we can end the poll now. Okay, another few minutes, another 15 seconds, then I will ring the bell. Right, can you share the results, please? Okay, so what's the results looking like, Saga? Yeah, so the top uh, reasons that come here is lead generation without face-to-face -face engagement is the top reason. Mm -hmm. uh, along with uh, keeping the clients engaged with our products uh, is another top reason. 55% of our audiences have, asked, have mentioned these two as one big reason. Another big reason that people have also mentioned is maintaining customer engagement uh, when they are in lockdown and another one is customer acquisition. So these top, uh, these four are one of the biggest reasons uh, that are mentioned by everyone. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks for your participation. I think it's good to know, you know, whether if we are sharing um, the same issues, but I'll try my best to address all or the top three issues at least, um, but we've had very limited time. So let's, let's continue. Uh, so I have been speaking to many customers over the past few months, and I have firsthand hearing from our customers about their pain points. And these are the typical themes that I have been hearing, which is quite aligned with what you have just mentioned just now. And thanks for your feedback. So in crisis, there's always the seed of opportunity. For those who know Chinese character, um, the Chinese word for crisis contains two elements. One is wei, wei xian de wei, danger. And the other one is qi, qi hui de qi means opportunity. So regardless how dangerous and difficult the situation is, as always, an opportunity for us to uncover through creativity and critical, critical thinking. Um, so companies like Netflix has survived the um, financial crisis back in 2008 when they first started by introducing new streaming plan. And also Groupon has, done, uh, has survived as well. So before anything else, I think it's important to learn more about our consumer and our customer behavior. Uh, how he has changed due to COVID-19. So let's start by understanding what motivated our customers to change their behavior. We have found that fear on, uh, is one of the key motivators of the change. So on average in, in March, 74% of the people were afraid to catch the virus. i let you in for a little secret. Malaysians are more afraid than Singaporean in quite a distance on, for, on the virus. And as a result, that 80% of, uh, of the people are, have avoided crowded places. And this has contributed to the search on online shopping, as I have mentioned earlier, with 32% increase over the past two months, spending um, you know, on personal hygiene, home cleaning, and health nutrition, like vitamin C, can you see my vitamin C here? It's right next to me at all times. And FYI, um, products like virus protection, masks, as well as hand sanitizer has surged 800%. And uh, FYI, online for toilet papers have spread Online, online purchases for toilet papers have spiked by 186%. Reckon that. So this has contributed to also 
um, people working from home and having virtual meetings is like a new norm to us. And it is a, there's a surge of uh, increase in internet usage, more data is being used and also 35% uh, increase in streaming services due to stay home. So I'm sure a lot of us here are binging Netflix, right? And I think it's also important to learn about our B2B customer behavior. Um, our B2B customer behavior um, is focused around the recession. A lot of them are concerned about the recession. And the good news for B2B is 40% of the B2B software buyers are spending more worldwide. Um, but for the rest of the B2B buyers, they are slowing down, they're buying, but they are researching online. So I would like to um, you know, encourage you to think about your content marketing strategy to connect with your B2B target audience. So if I were to look at the uh, change in customer behavior and preferences, it's important to look at how we will be able to adapt quickly during these challenging times um, and challenging landscape. Like I mentioned to Brian earlier when he was on the call, uh, COVID-19 actually is accelerating digital transformation, not our CIO or CEO. So um, my advice is to prioritize investment on your customer insights and tune your product lines and value proposition. Uh, for example, recently we helped a B2B geolocation company to uncover new opportunities outside of their comfort zone. They've always been working on automobile industry, but um, because of the fact that we helped them with in, to come up with more news use cases and, um, and uncovering new market segments, they were able to mitigate risks during this time. Um, the other thing that I would like to encourage you to look into if you no, your online presence is not strong uh, to, is to adopt a digital first go to market. Meet where your customers um, Meet your customers where they are today. It's important to do that because then they will have the top of mind of your product as well as your brand. And when, you, and when the situation recover, um, you're the first one that they will think of when they start to spend, right? And also reset the roles and the goals and having to adjust your mindset and behavior to online um, engagement as much as possible. So it... Personally, I have taken a conscious decision to adopt digital first go-to-market strategy for my practice. So over the past one and a half years, we have been busy working and improving our website and also our content marketing. So last week itself, uh, sorry, the last webinar itself, we have driven up to about 100 signups and 70% 70, 70 attendees. Um, and the um, key metrics that we always look at across the board was very strong, especially on MailChimp um, with 49% open rates for a newsletter and also 5.7% click-through rate, um, which is 2.5 times the industry rate that's going on. And along with this, I think it's important not to forget virtual selling. So many of my friends, B2B field sales, are facing a lot of new challenges in connecting with their customer and building and maintaining Guan Si with their customers. So it is important for us to start thinking how we can engage or adopt some of the behavior. Oh, I used to run an inside sales team and used to train them across the board on how to engage with customer, influence, demo their products and close deals remotely using technologies. So, you know, this is some of the food for thought for some of the B2B sales that are pretty offline in the past and engage with your customers online. And of course, we look at key metrics so that we can drive um, discipline in meeting our targets uh, during this time. For B2C e-commerce businesses, during uncertain times, we have spoken to a lot of companies and they are looking in, in, in having to manage their marketing budget much more closer as compared to before um, by, so that they can achieve more with less. 
budget. So we've been working with um, e-commerce clients to, um, to utilize data-driven decision um, to help them optimize their marketing budget uh, by using what we call CRO. It's a sexy name, meaning conversion rate optimization, which I will be sharing a little bit more so that our e-commerce businesses, clients will be able to manage and optimize their marketing spend and get the highest return from the different channels. Okay. So in terms of uh, best practices, we've also been watching a lot of companies um, who what are they doing and how are they taking actions to adapt to this situation? I'll just call out a few. Um, because China has been ahead of time um, in dealing with the COVID-19, so I think it's important for us to just take a look at Lin Jinxuan, one of the TCM skincare company, which was forced to shut down 40% of their stores during crisis. Um, and what the, what, what the company did was redeploy the 100 plus beauty advisors from those stores to become online influencers so that they will be able to leverage digital tools like WeChat and Taobao live streaming um, to engage with their customers virtually and drive online sales. As a result of that, their sales went up to 200% growth compared to last year, just in Wuhan, is crazy. And some other companies opted for partnership, as you can see here, Google and Apple are partnering to collaborate to um, fight COVID-19 with contact tracing. And others are adapting the products of offering to address society needs and requirements in the short term, but this will also improve their brand development in the long term. According to the forecast by eMarketeers, global worldwide ad spend has dropped by about 20 billion from the beginning of this year. You know, we understand that companies operating at this time has to manage their costs effectively, but afterwards, I would highly encourage marketeers to look into how to optimize your marketing budget uh, by not stopping your advertisement. As you can see on the right-hand side here, during the 2008 financial crisis, the brand Z portfolio top 100 brands have continued advertising and did not stop as compared, uh, compared to their peers and they did better when they uh, and they recovered faster when the recession has has gone back to normal and in in those days during the great depression um post cereal was one of the biggest brand name uh, they decided to slow down the advertising but kellogg's did not so as a result when the Great Depression recovered, Kellogg's became number one till today. And PNG uh, during today um, crisis is doubled down, um, has doubled down on their promotion to customers. So depending on what type of uh, products and brands that you have right now, and what are the solutions that you're providing. Um, so manage your marketing budget wisely and, and think of ways to reach out to your target audience. Okay, personally, I can relate to the importance of sales and marketing analytics. Um, I, was, I have been one of those sales professionals who have built my career mastering in relationship. And very much my, my decisions in the past was based on gut feel. Um, but over the years, I have learned a lot from my gurus and one of them is Andrew Lim uh, from Oracle in the past, uh, to apply science into art of selling. You know, setting the right key metrics and also tracking and measuring return on investment on one single source of truth. And this has always been my secret sauce to my success in sales and marketing. So Saga will be sharing more about the importance of sales and marketing analytics. Over to you, Saga. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks, Eugene, for um, talking about sales and marketing analytics. 
So uh, I think Vivian mentioned some really good details about product innovation, uh, diversification, por uh, portfolio diversification, as well as adopting digital first uh, technologies. And for companies who are looking to uh, take inspiration from uh, for using digital uh, technologies, they can actually look at governments across the world who have used a lot of digital technologies like big data and uh, different uh, uh, digital me methodologies to you know, help in handling this crisis. So for example, uh, South Korea is actually using big data to uncover possibilities of future infections and create containment zones, as well as they are also uh, government in Israel are actually using, uh, again, data analytics to optimize resources for uh, best effective response. So there's a lot of scope that companies can look into and to use digital technologies. So can you move to the next slide, please? So now looking at the different types of problems that our companies and the audiences are facing, the biggest challenge that we have observed is uh, a lot of companies are saying that our business model has been disrupted or we are not able to interact with our customers. That was also seen in the poll. So how sales and marketing analytics can help is, uh, sales and marketing analytics can help uncover new opportunities by analyzing your existing data. For example, we actually work with a gifting company to really look into their, uh, their online uh, Google analytics tools and different uh, CRM tools to find out different micro segments which were performing better than the overall audiences that they actually had. For example, we found out that there was a particular micro segment, uh, which was giving them 5.4 times better conversion rates compared to rest of them. So they could do focused marketing on those particular segments and achieve better gains and be able to target specific segments and newer segments. Uh, another problem that a lot of companies are facing is they have realized that they need to optimize their uh, marketing budgets. So because the ca operating cash flow is, is the biggest necessity right now. So here the companies uh, can actually make this optimize the investments uh, towards areas which have high ROI and ROAS. ROI is return on investments and ROAS is return on ad spend. So for example, we actually work with a telco client in really analyzing their uh, marketing campaign effectiveness and Throughout the campaign, we found out which channels uh, and which ad platforms are performing better for different metrics. And what we realized was just by modifying the landing page behavior and certain uh, UI and UX aspects, we could increase their conversions by two times. So there are different ways that you can actually look into data to give you. And lastly, uh, a lot of our sales, uh, B2B sales people are facing this challenge of reduction in lead generation and even their conversions have reduced because people are delaying their decision for large scale projects. So in this case, uh, what I would suggest is uh, you can introduce sales cadence. You can analyze your different types of uh, metrics, which are, and use data analytics to find out the volume, which is the number of leads that you're getting, the value size of your details and using the velocity, which is your conversion rates to map out what is happening. And you can use those metrics as part of your decision making. So in all in all, uh, sales and marketing analytics is very important because it's, uh, you need to, it should not only be used to measure your past performance, but it also should be utilized to measure or, and direct your future direction. So it's very important that you use that and use different methodologies to uh, move forward and uh, handle this crisis as well. So this is a bit on sales and marketing analytics. Back to you, Thanks, Saga, for sharing your insights. Um, I would like to invite you for another poll. Um, it will be interesting for, for us to rank the top three strategies suitable to address your current business challenges. So can I invite you? Um, Saga will be posting the poll right now. Uh, we will, I will ring the bell once we hit the um, maximum number of people who's participating on this. Let's see. Okay. For those who have just joined, I would like you to invite, I'm uh, sorry, I would like to invite you to participate on the poll. I think um, this is, you can do it independently without knowing what you have missed before. So, um, it's on, you can, the poll can be found on your screen right now. 
Okay. Oh, this will be interesting. TikTok, TikTok. Yeah. So last week, I think we had results as well. So let's compare to our last webinars polling results. Yeah, Saga? Yep. Okay. All right. So don't be shy. It's anonymous. Nobody knows that it's coming from you on the poll. Okay. Yeah, I think. All right. I'm going to ring the bell. So, Saga, can you do the honor? Right. So, Saga? Yeah. So, the top reason here is maintaining customer relationship, uh, mm. followed very closely by improving their ROI of the marketing efforts or different sales and marketing efforts. Uh, and then uh, the third is jointly shared by virtual selling and business model innovation. So oh. looking back at our previous results, actually maintaining customer, maintaining customer relationship was actually number one last mm. time as well. Uh, but this time the second and third are different. Uh, so we are finding out that people are looking more towards improving the ROIs and doing also focusing on virtual selling and business model innovation, which is a good uh, new insight that we found out. Yeah, possibly it's due to the fact that we have evolved over the past week. Things are moving really fast. And I think you know some of the... Um, participants here could have gotten their new action plan in, in place and wanted to see what would be good looks like in terms of return on investment on their different projects as we put in place. So let me um, move on to the next. And, and like I said, I've been trying to, we've been trying to address as many of these issues as possible, but be, because of limited of time, we might not be able to cover everything. So we can always take it offline. Yeah, so, um, so over the past few weeks, you know, VKT, VKT means my team and I have been thinking about how we can help our customers address some of the issues that you have highlighted earlier um, with, and we came up with this formula the, with three different elements. So we came up with the uh, VKT Breaking COVID-19 Barriers Program and the three components consist of diagnostics, consulting, and improvement of capabilities. And we can actually help you to explore uh, different grants in, in, in supporting um, different programs to help to address your, your personal or your challenges. So when we look at this pro, um, when we look at our formula, we 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 wanted to see how we can apply it into three different phases to help you get back to normal when COVID goes away, hopefully pretty soon. So we uh, we address it in three phases: adapt, recovery, and boost. So at adapt phase, where most of us are at, uh, I believe we have evaluated where we are at today. Um, we look into lowering operating costs, you know, also look at prompt actions so that we can bridge the gap in terms of revenue. Um, so my advice to you as when just before circuit breaker or MCO uh, is lifted, I think it's important for you to start thinking about how recovery plan looks good looks like. Um, so that you'll be able to ramp up your recovery plan when everything starts to get to normal. And this will set you up for success in having to move into the boost stage where you can focus on achieving a predictable and sustainable growth by looking into more data-driven uh, performance and higher return on investment for your sales and marketing investment. 
So since we are at the debt stage, uh, I would like to share with you how we are helping our B2B and B2C clients with our Go Digital programs. Um, some of you have highlighted, you know, the importance of having to maintain customer relationship. And now the customers are mostly locked at home and working from home, spending time at home. Most likely they will be uh, spending a lot of time on digital platforms, on different video platforms, and also spending a lot of time researching online as well all right so for b2b we have a program called b2b digital first go to market program which we can explore edg support enterprise development grant um, we have helped a, a b2b company um, is a b2b cloud communication in developing their customer acquisition because they were looking at how to target US, India, and Southeast Asia markets. And so what we did was we came up with the customer acquisition blueprint as well as design their campaigns for them to drive brand awareness at the same time driving performance marketing, which is leads and conversion. Um, we executed the campaigns and tested rigorously and also measure success across the different campaigns that has been launched. So we can, uh, so we, as always, we, uh, we leverage our consulting framework, the three DMs in helping to solve our customers' um, challenges. For B2C, it's, it's quite different. Uh, B2C companies would most likely have an e-commerce website and has been started, has already started transacting on, online. So um, at this juncture, um, a lot of B2C companies are looking at how to optimize the marketing budget to get the most out of it. So we are currently helping an e-commerce business to increase sales with conversion rate optimization, CRO. I'm not sure whether you've heard of it before, but uh, CRO is to increase the chances of your visits, your visitors and turn them into leads and sales, right? And for this particular e-commerce company, um, because we've been working with them and we've done very really well for their Facebook campaigns, they managed to improve their Facebook um, return on ad spend by 54. So for every $1 they invested, they got back $54. So now we're helping them to focus on their Google ads, um, which was quite fun and challenging. Um, so we are helping them with Google Ads set up search campaign and also look into the search campaign majority and look into the bid adjustment so that we can help them to structure the right campaigns. Um, and also we look into the landing page optimization to, to improve their return on ad spend and ROI. Okay. Um, so for more details, you can check out the uh, link below here. Um, on training and coaching programs, um, as what you have mentioned earlier, having to improve quantity or maintain customer relationship is really important. So we have launched a program by the name of Virtual Selling during crisis to ensure those who need to reach out to customers, especially B2B, um, and <clears throat> you can do it in a very different way right now in, in having to navigate through online tools and some of the techniques that we'll be introducing on how to engage more effectively online and how to position yourself online and how to pitch and sell online um, when you are in a in a virtual in you, in when you are in a virtual environment. And for those who are interested to uh, innovate their products and offerings and services, please feel free to join our business innovation during crisis program. Um, all of this you can be found at the link below. As, and you can sign up immediately. Yeah. Okay. So um, in terms of Singapore grants, you know, as you know, there are a lot of grants going on, has been released by our government. And it, yesterday itself, uh, 3.5 billion of support has been uh, announced. And if you look at grant, I would, I would advise you to look at it in two ways. One is the trans 
transformation efforts and the other one is the training efforts. So transformational efforts can be supported by EDG and PSG. Uh, EDG is more in improvement core capabilities and productivities and innovations and market access and PSG is, is more towards focusing on tools of which NG will be introducing later. Training can be supported by SkillFuture and there's a new grant by the name of SFEC um, which is uh, above an existing grant um, that covers both training as well as transformation. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Angie Huang from Singtel to share with you some of the most interesting care pack um, support for you. Over to you, Angie. Hello, hi, morning everyone. Hello. Okay, <laughs> nice to have everyone with us on this virtual space. So this is uh, just a quick sharing of what uh, Singtel has in place for some of our SME customers. It's called the, we call it the SME PCP Care Pack, basically helping our SMEs to tide over during this um, business continuity period whereby everything is, has to be really quick and fast as what Vivian has shared earlier, be where your customers are in the digital space and really adopt a digital first mindset. So uh, next slide please, just running through what uh, SMEs have, what we have in place. So, um, be where your customers are on the connect solutions. So email marketing. So for those of you who hasn't started off and are doing an email marketing campaign, running, developing various EDMs, you can uh, consider an email marketing solutions. So now we're offering free six months to our SME customers. And also if you haven't, haven't started selling online in terms of e-commerce, you can consider the 99 SME e-marketplace. Set up an online store for free, no joining fees, no commissions. Okay, but and what's more, we are also absorbing all the shipping fees that you have incurred during this time. That means for all transactions, your shipping fees will be bare by Singtel all the way until 30th of June. We really want our SMEs to, to if you have not started on e-commerce, take this opportunity, use e-commerce to reach out to your customers. If you have already have your online store, not to worry, use this as an additional exposure for yourself. Of course, um, in terms of WhatsApp, data free messaging for all Singtel customers as well. On the other side, you can see it's mainly for the collaboration tools for if you have to engage uh, your, your employees or even your customers who are you know, all working from home right now. So virtual workspace, uh, three, six months. If you need accounting software, HR software, taking this opportunity to digitalize all your processes. Um, try to make use of these three months uh, subscription whereby you can really test out whether the software is suitable for you. And the collaboration tools, of course, Microsoft Teams, if you want to start running video meetings to engage your customers, uh, you can, uh, sorry, previous slide, please. Uh, the, they will be able to engage to Microsoft Teams to, to enjoy a free six months as well. So in terms of this solution, if you're interested to find out more, you can visit the URL that we have there, singtel.com slash SMEBCP. So the next slide would be the PSG grant programs that is uh, supported by the, our Singapore agencies here. So if you are uh, eligible Singapore incorporated SMEs, you can click on these uh, remote working tools with up to 80% grants. So they include the Microsoft Teams, which uh, comes bundled with the Office 365 solutions. If you prefer to use Google Hangouts, that also will, is entitled to a PSG grant. You can claim up to 13,000. For those who are more familiar with the Zoom, as what we are using now, Singtel Biz Conference is powered by Zoom. So there are various packages that you can consider to, to start off to engage your, your employees and your customers. You can claim up to $3,000 if you take on this subscription now. So if you are interested to take on the PSG grant, visit singtel.com slash PSG. And I think uh, Vivian's team will also be sending out a post-event questionnaire. If you, you think you want to indicate your interest to find out more about this, feel free to indicate your, your inquiries there. So that's all I have to share today. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you so much, Angie. Um, I'm very excited about all these um, packages that, um, and, and also the Previous webinar participants will also will, will also very very excited, and I think 
um, some of them have signed out. All right. So while we are preparing for Q&A, uh, I would like to invite you for two things. One is to submit your evaluation form. Um, uh, your continuous in inputs will be very important for us so that we can always look into improvements and based on your feedback. Um, so if you can look at the chat room, um, Jasmine, thank you so much. You can actually refer to the, uh, to the link here um, in the chat, chat room um, for the evaluation form. And on the other hand, it's also, we, we've also provided a complementary diagnostic so that you will be able to find out on your readiness on sales and marketing based on the current situation um, and you will be getting a report back from us. So it's complimentary, free, free of charge as of now. So 